Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, we have some very exciting news, or some very bad news, depending upon what your viewpoint is. Hybrid ships are starting to be tested, which means they will probably be eventually added into the game. But the good eventually, as in Wargaming is actually talking about it now, and not the bad eventually where it's just mentioned in passing. So... I'm going to read straight from the World of Warships development blog page. I will link to the website in the description down below if you want to pull that up and read along with me as I read this to you guys. If not, uh, just sit back and enjoy whatever background footage I'm slapping on this video. Here we go. ST Hybrids, please note that all information in the development blog is preliminary and subject to change during testing. Any showcase features may or may not end up on the main server. The final information will be published on our game's website. In the near future, a new group of battleships and cruisers will be tested, hybrids. Their main feature is the ability to launch a squadron of planes. Launching and controlling them is done the same way as with aircraft carriers, by pressing a separate button. After launch, control is fully transferred to the squadron and the ship may be controlled with autopilot. Hybrids won't have automatically activated consumables. Testing will be done with two ships, carrying torpedo bombers, Japanese Tier 8 cruiser Ton, and Japanese Tier 6 battleship Issy. Detailed parameters of the ships will be published before they are added to the game, granted a successful test is conducted. So, these are two ships that players have been begging Wargaming to introduce into the game. Yes, I know, it sounds ironic, right? Two essentially aircraft carriers <laughs> that players have been begging to get added into the game for quite some time now. And fun fact, these ships are very real. Japan really did this late in the war. They were, of course, running out of carriers, and the Pacific War quickly became a who has the most and best carriers war. And, well, Japan got desperate and turned a couple of battleships and cruisers into aircraft carriers. They also had aircraft carriers, submarines, too. Well, that's another story for another day but this does open up that possibility so also another fun fact i know the issy is but i'm not 100 percent sure about the tone the issy is actually already in world of warships blitz the mobile uh, version of world of warships and the way she works is a little bit different from what they're talking about here she has i believe uh two dive bombers and one torpedo bomber squadron and it's works really uniquely i think i'm not sure if carriers are in blitz yet i haven't even played that game i don't even have it downloaded but um i have seen footage of this and i believe the way it works in blitz is you just launch the fighters click on the ship and the planes automatically attack it kind of like auto drops back in the day of rts i'm not sure if there was like a whole rts system around the issy and blitz again i haven't played it so i, I don't know but the ship is technically in the game and they are more than likely going to just move that model over and just upgrade it to pc standards for the see the tone i don't know if the tones in blitz or not but yeah this is really exciting for i'm sure a good chunk of you and really terrifying for another good chunk of you guys but as far as i'm concerned um it's actually pretty cool i enjoy seeing historical stuff getting added to the game even crazy stuff like this that's why I was pretty okay with the announcement of the of the uh, skip bombers because it was a real thing in World War II, and these are two very real ships that existed during World War II. Now the issue that's going to come from this is that this is obviously going to open up the, the door to God knows what Wargaming can think uh, can think of, but I mean it's more complexity being added to the game more variety being added to the game so that's of course good for the health of the game and the overall longevity of the game itself if whole lines get developed out of this concept now the mechanic of when you launch the plane you immediately go to controlling the planes directly i'm not sure that's what i at least would have wanted from the issy and the tone i probably would have liked just the good old click on the target you want the players to go and attack and they go and attack it but granted with the way AA works now having AI pilots control the planes they'll probably just be flying through every single bit of flak that the ships put up so obviously that's not going to work out so it'll be 
interesting to see how this develops over time. I mean, because the whole point of the Issy and the Taunt is that you can just send your planes off to do damage while you're also doing damage with your main battery guns. So not having that any that ability to do that, I think is probably going to hurt these ships. Now, someone did comment this on the submarine update video. It would be cool if the planes could kind of work like the anti-submarine warfare planes would work, where you kind of just click on a general area, it goes there, drops its payload, and then bugs out. Although, again, you are running into the problem of the flak and not being able to dodge because it's AI pilots, and I'm not sure how they could teach the AI to dodge the flak. I mean, I'm sure they could, but I mean, just going off of how the AI works already, like with the catapult fighter and how it simply just doesn't work half the time, you know, that, that would be very, very infuriating. So either they're going to have to come up with some type of AI if they want to go that route, or I guess you are just going to have to control the plane straight up. Which, you know, takes other issues with it as well, because now you have a situation where if the uh, Issy wants to use its planes, it effectively has to be controlled by autopilot, which, I mean, isn't necessarily a bad method of doing it, but now you have a battleship that should be tanking that's going to be controlled by an autopilot, and I don't blame anybody for doing what's what's probably going to happen, and by that I mean just sitting in the back with autopilot running you on loop-de-loops, because autopilot right now isn't really good at autopiloting, um, so I certainly wouldn't want to trust it to, you know, guide my battleship near the front lines because it's going to run me into an island or it's going to randomly throw me in reverse when it could just go forward because, God, that autopilot still sucks. It's, ironically, it is better than it used to be, but I don't think it has the finesse for a battleship to be anywhere near the front lines. And plus, with the Issy, you do only have the, the, the front guns. There's no gun in the back because, well... That's where the plane goes now. So that's another obvious compromise to these ships. But the overall idea is cool. And these ships are historical again. They're probably going to be premium ships. Well, actually, I can pretty much guarantee you that they are going to be premium ships. Um, Tone might be a free XP ship because it's a tier 8. Or heck, they may do a, a, a dry dock for Tone because it's a tier 8 and it's so unique. Um, I don't know how, how well that would go over though. You know, putting one of the first hybrid ships in the dry dock, so it may just be a straight-up premium. Um, Issy, so I believe it's already a premium in Blitz, so it probably will become a premium here in the main game. And, you know, I am also kind of interested to see where they're going with this, because it's stuff like this that makes me think they're moving on for the Sevia rework, and also the Captain rework that got announced not that long ago. It's kind of like they're like, okay, we've gotten the CVs to where we're mostly happy with them. I mean, there's still changes being made all the time to CVs still. But it's kind of sending the message that they are kind of happy with it and are ready to start experimenting with other things like this. Which, again, I think is good for the game. More variety, more ships to play, adding more complex uh, mechanics in. But, you know... We'll see where it goes, and heck, we might get, uh, what, that crazy Iowa design from, like, the 50s where they ripped the, the rear turret off of Iowa and made it a hybrid carrier. That would be something to see, or, good God, with the Russian ships, who knows what they'll do with that. I mean, now that you're opening up this can of worms, this could go completely nutty. And then, like I mentioned earlier, the I-400, the aircraft carrier submarine. I mean, it's not like it could carry a lot of aircraft, they could only carry, like, three or five if I remember correctly um, but that thing could certainly get added into the game now and with the Issy 2 there was one version of it that I mentioned um, in one of my um, top five future premium ships videos where I talked about um, ships that could be added to the game as premium ships and I mentioned just giving it like an absolute ton of fighter consumables and adding it in as kind of a an AA superiority ship where you could just absolutely de deny an area around the ship to the CV because I did bring up that if you if the ship would be introduced into the game it would have to be in the CV rework playstyle which again kind of gips the purpose of the ship but you know just having a bunch of fighters being basically an AA barge and providing fighter support for your team was uh, an idea that I tossed around, but I don't know. It'll be interesting to see where this goes, if this is going to be something that we're going to 
see a lot of and get lots of updates on this because this is these have been some very 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 high demand ships and they're finally adding them in so i guess they'll be giving us regular updates on these ships because these have absolutely been some in-demand ships from the audience so i guess we'll just see where it goes guys but yeah overall i'm interested in them i'm glad that they're adding them in they have been long awaited and again i think it's pretty cool so anyway guys, that's what I think. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We are on our way to 20,000 subs. We are very close to 17k right now. I think we're actually, possibly when this goes live, under 200 sub, no, under 100 subs away from that goal, potentially. But anyway guys, thank you, thank you for all the support as always. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful Friday. And also make sure to come out here on the stream tonight. I will be streaming from 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time to around 8 p.m. U.S. Central Time here and on Twitch. So make sure you follow me on Twitch as well. Link is also in the description down below. Again guys, have a wonderful Friday. and hope to catch you guys in the next one.